Greetings, BookTube. Welcome back to the History Shelf. My name is Peg. Thanks for joining me today. Say, so today we're going to do another indie author uh, spotlight. We're going to be focusing on several different indie authors. Um, I've got some new historical fiction that has been sent to me um, by these authors uh, who have reached out to me. And I've just been so tickled pink. I love bubbling up new authors or, you know, people who are just writing their books and, and trying to make their way without like a mainstream publisher backing them. So uh, I'm always happy to uh, to feature these works. So, um, and I think I'm also going to include in this one, uh, I was going to do a standalone video but uh, for these three books, but let's just start with these three for right now because I had mentioned and teased in videos past that I would be doing a young adult, um, which I've never done. I, I don't read young adult fiction. Um, but I wanted to look at these because they're historical. I think they're important. Um, and I think that these could appeal as another, another avenue of trying to get a younger generation kind of vibing on history, you know? So, um, I wanted to, to bubble these up and then I've got a, a few more here to show you. So let's just get right into it, shall we? So the first indie author I wanted to highlight, uh, is a couple well, I don't know if they're a couple, sorry, but they write together, and that, that is Marjorie Carter and Randall Nur Nurhus, Randall Nurhus, and it is a trilogy. It's a beautiful young adult trilogy that I think will appeal. I have read into the first book. Um, the writing is, 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 is solid, and uh, it'll be interesting to see where the series goes, but uh, this is book one, and it's called Talks Like Thunder. Red with Native Blood, book one. So let's get into this. What's this one about? Again, it's Marjorie Carter and Randall Nurhus, or Nurhus. Um, let's see, Arizona Territory, 1871. Talks like thunder, can't imagine life outside of her Apache family. So after both her parents succumb to deadly disease, her heart is ripped in two when her estranged grandfather takes her to his Chiricahua village. And as she blossoms into a young woman, her extraordinary insights into ancient mystical beliefs transform her into a fierce warrior. Preparing to defend their sacred land from invading white men, the driven protector falls for a fellow fighter and his words of a brighter future. But when their tribe is captured by U.S. soldiers, Thunder's years in captivity fuel her to return to those she loves and take revenge on those who stole her innocence. Talks Like Thunder tells the remarkable fictional account of one woman's journey of compassion, loyalty, and respect for the earth. Through three interconnected tales, Talks Like Thunder's struggle to retain the dignity and freedom integral to her centuries-old culture serves as a reminder of the spiritual strength revealed in indigenous American history. Um, so a nice, strong female protagonist, uh, beautifully uh, just bound, and also the writing is solid. And the books are, they're not too hard to take for, for your, you know, your young reader. We're um, 148 pages for the first book. And so Talks Like Thunder is our protagonist. Well, that'll take you into book two, which is Falling Star, Red with Native Blood. Uh, which is, I guess that is also, um, that's just the full title. Or this full subtitle is Red with Native Blood. And that's book two. Um... I don't want to read anything on this one because I don't want to spoil anything uh, from, from the developments of the first book. I should say the press, the publisher of this is Soul Mission Publications. But if you were to just go to Amazon and type in, um, I would say maybe just type in Talks Like Thunder should bring it up. But you can also type in the, you know, the author's names up here. So, so we have book two. Um, again, uh, very much a... Uh, uh, a doable read, maybe 175 pages. And then we have the book three, Singing Wind. Um, yeah, Red with Native Blood. Look at this beautiful artwork, though. Um, so I think this is a strong contender for maybe making this a, you know, a pick for your book club. If you like to read young adult fiction, young adult historical fiction, uh, and just a, a wonderful, you know, comes in a trilogy. I, I just, I love trilogies. 
I do. I love series. Um, and then the, the third book takes you into 1879. Um, and I can't say anything more and I don't want to read anything more because it's going to spoil it for me because <laughs> I have read in, I have started reading Talks Like Thunder. So, um, but yeah, please do check out Marjorie Carter and Randall Nurhus, um, their trilogy. This is fantastic. Talks Like Thunder is the first. All right. Next, we have two books uh, by the same author. This author was, she was kind enough to reach out to me. Um, I said I would be interested in looking at one of her books that was coming out. And in fact, it already has. Uh, and when I get to it, see, I have an arc of it, um, but this is not the finished artwork. In fact, the art, the finished artwork is beautiful. Um, but this is Susan Hagenbotham. She's written several books. Um, but I do believe she, she probably, um, says it's Onslow Press, but I think she might be, you know, doing her own printing or her, her own publishing. Um, but she writes some fantastic, like, topics, like, things that I just want to dive into. Let's, let's do this one first. This is an older book of hers that she, she sent along. I said, I'd be happy for anything else you want to send me. And, uh, in addition to the one up, that was upcoming. But she sent me this one, which is perfect. Because you know how I love Civil War stuff. So uh, this is uh, John Brown's Women um, by Susan Higginbotham. And it's a nice, sturdy read, Onslow Press. Um, let me read the back to you. It's the little known story of the women behind John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry. As the United States wrestles with its, with its besetting sin, slavery, what? Okay, hang on a second. <laughs> Let me read the back copy again. Okay, let me just skip that word. As the United States wrestles with its sin, uh, slavery, abolitionist John Brown is growing tired of talk. He takes actions that will propel the nation towards civil war and thrust three courageous women into history. Wealthy Brown, that is her name, Wealthy Wealthy Brown, married to John Brown's oldest son, eagerly falls in with her husband's plan to settle in Kansas. Amid clashes between pro-slavery and anti-slavery settlers, Wealthy's adventure turns into madness, mayhem, and murder. 15-year-old Annie Brown is thrilled when her father summons her to the farm he has rented in preparation for his raid. There, she guards her father's secrets while risking her heart. Mary Brown never expected to be the wife of John Brown, much less the wife of a martyr. Uh, when her husband's daring plan fails, Mary must travel into hostile territory where she finds the eyes of the nation riveted upon, riveted upon John and upon her. Spanning three decades, John Brown's Women is a tale of love and sacrifice and of the ongoing struggle for America to achieve its promise of li liberty and justice for all. This sounds so good, you guys. So again, this is an, an older book of hers. It came out in 2021. Um, but I'll, li I'll link her uh, website below. I'll link, I'll try to find links for all these authors, um, and put them in the description box so that you can actually go, um, to their site and see what they have to offer. So this was the, the newer book that, uh, Susan Higginbotham had, uh, reached out to me about. Now this is not the final, this is not the final cover, but it's The Queen of the Platform, a novel of women's rights activist, Ernestine Rose. So um, if I'm able to, I'll, I'll put a photo up here of the um, of the uh, the real <laughs> the real book cover cover, um, which again is in that style of. I mean, it's it's nice. It's it's definitely high quality. It's uh, it's you know it's high resolution, but it's always it's like the back of a woman looking out. So it's, that, that's the style right now. I don't know, um, but yeah, this one is about Ernestine Rose. And let's see, I think this one just came out maybe about a month or two ago. It says here, from the award-winning author of The Stolen Crown and Hanging Mary comes a novel based on the life of the indomitable Ernestine Rose, whose fearless advocacy helped bring about the rights women enjoy today. Question everything, Ernestine vows with, while growing up in a Poland ravaged by the Napoleonic Wars. Accept nothing blindly. 
Rejecting her rabbi father's religion and an arranged marriage, Ernestine strikes out on her own, arriving in New York in 1836. Distressed by the injustices around her, she takes to the public speaking platform, uh, pressing for the abolition of slavery and for women's rights alongside activists like Frederick Douglass, Susan B. Anthony, and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. But at a time when women are expected to, to confine themselves to the parlor and the hearth, and when an atheist is best advised to say nothing at all, <laughs> is Ernestine's adopted country ready to hear her? Um, following Ernestine through triumph and heartbreak and across two continents, the queen of the platform brings out of history's shadows a heroine who braved public scorn to fight for the values she held dear. So that is Susan Higginbotham's latest novel, although this is not the title. Let's flash that. No, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to put that in the editing, but uh, you know, I'll try to flash that the the real uh, dust cover uh, if it's available. So the queen of the platform by Susan Higginbotham. Check out her website below. She's got a lot of different books, um, a lot of different historical fiction. And if you like historical fiction, you know where to go. This one is different. Now, I'm not going to lie. This one is different. I'm putting, I'm, <laughs> I've never heard of anything like this in my life, but I have seen a couple of other places have reviewed this book. Um, are you ready for this, guys? Get ready. This is I, Caravaggio by Eugenie, Eugenio Volp, or Volpe. Look at that cover. I, Caravaggio. It's put out by Clash, Clash Publishers. I don't know. Never heard the flash. Okay, get ready for this. The famous bisexual libertine, who would be more at home on Tinder than at a Roman cathedral, gallivants through the streets like brushstrokes to become a Baroque 16th century icon. The year 1604, and Michelangelo Marisa de, de, de Caravaggio is a superstar. His blockbuster paintings packing the pews of Rome. Caravaggio should be reveling in prosperity, but the artistic trailblazer and nefarious street brawler is his own worst enemy. While the genius paints masterpieces, the ruffian in him can't stay out of jail. <laughs> I Caravaggio dramatizes the superstar's psychological unraveling under the sexual and political pressures of the Catholic Reformation. So uh, this sounds like a blast in a glass. I'm just, I'm just going to say this sounds like it's going to be a fun read. I mean, the cover should tell you everything you need to know. Um, it's been praised by a lot of different writers. Um, yeah, so I'm, 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 I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Oh, yep. It's, it's, it's rough. It's rough and ready. The language is rough and ready. We can see some. We can see some naughty words in there. <laughs> So I Caravaggio, Eugenio Volpe from Clash uh, Publishing. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to really just having some fun with this one. Um, uh, and then finally, oh, that was so sweet. I was, I was con I've been contacted by so many new authors. It's been so much fun getting to know new people uh, and wishing them well with their, you know, writing endeavors. Um, and this, this very nice gentleman, Jim Brennan, he emailed me. He got my uh, my email address. My business email address is in the About tab on my channel. If you go to the About tab and you scroll down and you say, like, business email address, you have to click on it, and then it will give it to you. Uh, so if you are an independent author, um, you have something you want to, you think it will be right up my in my viewer's alley, please contact me. Um, This is, this is something fascinating. I said, please send me your book. I'd be very happy to show it to um, my viewers. And I can't wait to read it because it, it covers something that happened that I'm not aware of. But this is a very interesting title. This is Once a Welder by Jim Brennan. As you can see, look at that picture, that photograph. Look at the size, the frame, you know, just the scale. Once a Welder by Jim Brennan. Um, all right, let me, let me get to this. It says here, before Jimmy McKee's 21st birthday, he'd seen a man burnt to death, a rigger crushed by a propeller, and an apprentice lose his left eye when a grinding wheel exploded in his face. But he didn't know that there were even more sinister ways to die on the waterfront. Um, it says here, uh, 
as we go into the blurb itself, Jimmy McKee finds family and purpose as a welder at the Philadelphia Navy Yard, constructing boilers that power massive aircraft carriers when the Navy mandates the use of a robotic welding process. Let me start reading this again. Okay, Jimmy McKee finds family and purpose as a welder at the Philadelphia Navy Yard, constructing boilers that power massive aircraft carriers when the Navy mandates the use of a robotic welding process that guarantees to save money at the expense of shipyard jobs. But when the robotic welds fail during sea trials on the USS Saratoga, an influential Navy admiral blames the leaking boilers on human error and orders a tiger team of welders and boiler makers to make repairs at the ship's home port in Florida. Just as the team is set to finish, four men are killed in a horrific accident. Jimmy discovers that one of the dead men had information that proved the robotic welding process was scientifically flawed. He begins to look into Maestro Fusion, the company who pioneered the process, and uncovers a conspiracy that reaches the highest echelons of the Navy. You guys out there have such good ideas. And you know, when I was emailing Jim back and forth about this, um, and he wrote a very kind note, and he, he, he printed up... I even got a few uh, bookmarks. Thank you, Jim. Very kind of you. I'll be using one of these as I read this book. Sent me a nice little note. Um, but again, this is very interesting to me. Um, he says, Dear Peggy, thank you for taking an interest in my novel. I believe it will be... Um, I, I believe it will be a deviation from your historical uh, book reviews. However... You will get a picture of blue collar life in Philadelphia. I love it. I love it, Jim. That's exactly, I, listen, I read history, but I read nonfiction. And, um, and he says here, the premise is based on true events um, that occurred during the 1980s. I think, I think that's, yeah, 80s, right? 1980 or is that 1950s? Hello. No, 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 1980s um, at the Navy Yard. And... And the characters are an amalgamation of the people who work there. So uh, the fact that, look, I love learning about people's trades as well. And I've never, like, don't know anything about welding. But I know it's an important, uh, obviously a very important aspect of shipbuilding. Um, and I'm fascinated. in the fact that this is based on a true event, yeah, I'm there, Jim. I'm all there. So, uh can't wait to read it and report back to you guys uh, if you want to know my thoughts on it. But um, I plan on reading it and I encourage Jim to uh, keep writing. I've read a few pages already and I'm like, oh, I like it. I like this a lot. So, um, yes. So there you have it. We've got, um, we've got some young adults. We've got the trilogy of Talks Like Thunder um, by Marjorie... Carter and Randall Nervous, uh, Soul Mission Publications, Young Adult. We've got Susan Higginbotham. She is cranking out historical fiction. Again, um, go to her website and you can see, um, that's again, that's not the final jacket cover, but check out her historical fiction. Um, looks to be good stuff with strong female characters too. Uh, and then we have I Caravaggio, which just sounds like a a uh, a debauched experience of reading. <laughs> um, this is gonna be fun. And then Once a Welder by Jim Brennan. Congratulations to all of you on your books. Um, I'm very excited for you all. Let me know, guys, what you think of these books below. Again, I'm going to link, uh, check out all the links below in the description box for these authors. Um, you know, find something that speaks to you from the stack. Reach out, support, buy a copy, you know, share a copy. Maybe make some of these as gifts. These are the, I'm really, really wanting to get the younger generation into history. And I think historical fiction and well-written uh, propulsive novels are the way to do it. You know, is that's the entry. That's the gateway. This historical fiction could be the gateway. I don't say gateway drug, but it's the gateway books to uh, just getting a life of interested in other people and cultures and the history of our country. And um, yeah, so these would make a great, a great gift, I think. Um, but again, 
just supporting historical fiction, s supporting people who are writing their novels, uh, whether they are thrillers based on true events. Uh, I just love what I do. So thanks for joining me here right now for this, uh, this uh, installment of Indie Author Spotlight. Um, we're going to continue to do these uh, as I continue to receive new books. So again, if you are a new author, an independent author, and uh, especially if you've written historical fiction or anything like that, or nonfiction, oh, not nonfiction, what am I saying? I mean, like, I, I will read it. You send it my way. And then I will also, uh, you know, if it's something that I think is really going to resonate with this crowd uh, on, on BookTube, um, I definitely will include it. So you look me up. You've got my social media, all my, all my, uh, there's plenty of ways to contact Peg. Uh, you don't have to do it in the comment section. You can do it on my social media. Um, you can email my business uh, email address, which is in the about tab, as I said. So anyway, okay, there you go. I did my due diligence. I put it out there. So come on, everybody. Bombard me. Bombard me with your books. <laughs> uh, anyway, until next time, BookTube, thanks for joining me on the history shelf as I put Daisy to sleep. Thanks, Daisy. Um, we're going to head off now into the sunset. So thanks for joining me on another episode of Indie Author Spotlight. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.